right this is our next spectacle uh, like uh, what i do here is uh, we adjust the spectrometer and you will see to determine the refracting angle of a prism all right so uh, here let's uh, look at the practical okay first of all uh, you should uh, do some adjustments okay i'll explain what these adjustments are first one is the adjustment of the telescope first of all let's see what is this telescope hmm? what is this telescope in this picture as you can see this is the telescope okay we can freely move it freely move it and this is the collimator okay this is a collimator okay this is also just like a lens okay which uh, like directs an image towards the telescope we can move this around okay and uh, this is the prism table the prism table what you call prism table and here you have a certain scale here okay right let us see how these things come in handy okay so first of all you should be able to adjust the telescope okay that means uh, what you should do is right now there are cross wires here okay there are cross wires here what you should do is you should first of all uh, now to understand this properly you should have done the practical ones okay that's the most important thing but uh, uh, like here without doing also if you remember the points like uh, you can answer the questions right but the thing is i is share a video which will uh, show the track it's 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 in signal medium but uh, you can understand the points related to the practical like how we perform this how the equipments are made but if you watch that video i'll, I'll put that in the description okay so you can uh, watch that video to get a proper idea so let's look at the adjustments first of all uh, now I told uh, these are the uh, like equipments, right? You have the telescope, you have the, this is the telescope, okay? This is the collimator, okay? And you have the uh, prism table, okay? you have the prism table here, yeah? and you have a scale here at all those. So uh, what you can do is there, there is a set of cross wires available. First of all, you should look at the telescope and you should make sure by adjusting a knob, there's a knob available, adjusting a knob, you should make sure that the crosswise are perfectly seen. That's the number one thing you should do. Okay. See, I have given it here. And then you should point the telescope at a distant object somewhat far away. Okay. And you should uh, again adjust the knob such that the image can be clearly seen. Okay. So our uh, intention of doing that is, okay, the telescope should be able to properly focus parallel light rays. If you take a far away image, light rays coming from those images are assumed to be parallel, right? It's almost parallel. So if the telescope can properly focus such an image, that means the telescope is able to properly focus parallel light rays coming into it because it's useful in the practical later on, right? So that is the adjustment of the telescope. You should memorize these things. And then adjustment of the collimator, okay? So if you take the collimator, that is this part. It is fixed, okay? It is fixed. The collimator is fixed. So what we should do is uh, we should illuminate first, right? Now next to the collimator there will be a sodium lamp fixed. Here you have a sodium lamp. Okay, it is it is having a yellow color light. Okay, after we illuminate that, what we should do is we should uh, we, I mean we can rotate this telescope. We can take this telescope here, make it in line with this uh, collimator. All right, and then we should clearly be able to observe a slit. Mm -hmm crosswise are like this and you should see a, a yellow color slit here which uh, which is uh, the shine of the uh, sodium lamp okay right so these are the two adjustments that we should do in the telescope and the uh, collimator okay in the telescope you should first uh, be able to see the crosswise properly and number two you should be able to point a distant image and focus it properly such that parallel lace will be focused correctly that's the main intention and then collimator also should be just like this. See here, the light slit should be clearly seen. Okay, right. So our adjustments are done, right? Our adjustments are done. And also uh, here it is mentioned le about leveling the prism table, right? So normally uh, it's better if you can level the prism table, right? Using leveling screws, okay? Using leveling screws, using set screws, you can use those techniques to like uh, confirm that this prism table is not slanted. To confirm that this prism table is in a 
horizontal level. Okay, right. After those adjustments, we'll come to the uh, things which are covered in this practical. Okay, we find one thing that is angle of uh, prism, angle of the prism. Okay, this is one uh, quantity that you're going to find. A and the other one is minimum deviation, that is D. We are going to find these two things, prism angle and minimum deviation. Okay. First of all, we'll focus on finding the prism angle. Okay. Here, what we do is something like this. Right. We take this uh, prism table. Okay. And uh, this is our collimator. Okay. We keep our prism such that it is exactly like in line with this collimator, just like this. Okay. A bit like this. Exactly, right? Then what we do is we move our this is our telescope. Okay. We move it here. Okay. And you you notice that uh, like light rays coming from here will get reflected like this. Okay. What you do is you just move the telescope to this direction. Okay. And uh, when you observe, you will see something like this. Just the crosswires. Okay. It might be the image of the crosswires, or it might be just nothing, right? It will be mostly just nothing, right? And uh, when you move it past this point, you will see suddenly a uh, light will appear, a slit of light will appear, okay, which is which is being created somewhere here. The light is coming from that slit will appear. At that moment, you should stop. Okay, when you when you are able to properly see this slit, you should stop somewhere here. Okay, you should stop somewhere here, and then you will get an angle. You will get an angle measurement. Okay, you will get a certain angle measurement at this point. Let's say that is theta two, theta one. Okay, right? You uh, like rotated the telescope while the collimator was in its place with the sodium lamp switched on. Okay, and the prism was exactly in line on the table, and you observed a certain angle when this slit appeared. You should do the same this way. Okay, so at this point also, what what should happen? You should observe a slit appearing at one point, and you should note the Angle the eye as well. Let's say that is theta two. Okay, right. Then, what is the prism angle? See here, yeah, you can see it clear, right? Uh, prism angle means actually the you, you should take the difference between those two angles and divide it by two. That's it. Yeah, I hope you understood, right? So, for example, if you take here, right? Here, if you take uh, if this thing is theta. I mean, it might be some difference theta 2 minus theta 1. You can take the angle of prism by theta divided by 2. Okay. So, one thing is done in this practical. Okay. So, using this spectrometer device, okay, which consists of a telescope, collimator, prism table, okay, we are going to find the angle of prism angle and the minimum deviation angle. So, now we have found the prism angle. That's done. Okay. Right. These are the adjustments we do. So we have found the we have found a way to calculate the angle of prism. Okay. Uh, next we'll uh, look at how, like how we can calculate the deviation angle. Hmm? Now here, what should we do? Hmm? Right. Here we should do something like this. So here what we should do is like while the system is there, right? While keeping the, uh, like, okay, yeah. Now at one moment, okay, at one moment, like uh, let's say the collimator is here and you are keep the telescope here, right? I'll keep the telescope here. Uh, and what you should do is, okay, what you should do is uh, while keeping the image of the street on the crosswires, right? You can see them, you see it properly, right? We should rotate the prism table, prism table slowly. We should rotate the prism table slowly, just like this. Yeah, we'll rotate, let's say we rotate it like this. And you will observe a very uh, amazing thing. That is, like, let's say we saw the slit like this. Okay, initially we saw the slit like this. Okay. At a certain angle, when you keep the telescope like this and when you rotate the prism table, okay, you are just going to keep a telescope at a certain position and you are going to rotate the prism table. Okay, while it is totally focusing the light. But at one moment, you will see this slit will move to this way. It is stopped at the same time. It will start moving this way. Right? You can identify 
some turn in position. Okay, you can identify some turn in position, right? So what you can do is you can you can note down the angle at that turning position. You can note down the angle at that turning position, right? Simply in practical, this is what we do. Now, when I say this, you might not understand it perfectly. So watch that video. Um, so like that is what we simply do. Okay, you identify the point where this street goes to the right, stops, and starts moving to the left. Starts changing directions, right? And uh, after you get that uh, deviation point, okay. After you get that deviation point, like you can get, you will get two points like that, right? You get two points like that, and what you should calculate is the difference between those two points. Okay, it's like this. Let's say, uh, you uh, got such a point when the angle was one hundred and eighty five, and also you got such a point when the angle was five, right? So the deviation angle is one hundred and eighty five. Minus five, which is equal to one hundred and eighty, is something like that. Okay, that means like in your prism table, when the angle was five degrees, you saw a minimum deviation point. When the angle was like one hundred and eighty-five degrees, also you saw a minimum deviation point. Right. So that is what they are asking in uh, past paper question. Right. You have uh, these two values for your minimum deviations. Then what will be the minimum deviation? These two values at which minimum deviation occurs. If so, what will be the minimum deviation? That is what they will ask in past papers. Okay, so it is like if you take it simple, it is a very simple practical, right? I mean, first of all, you adjust the telescope, adjust the collimator, level the prism table, and then you know how to get the angle of prism just by looking at two sides. Okay, and then what you should do, you do is you keep the telescope in one place and you move the prism table, and then you identify two positions such that. The slit moves to one side, stops, and starts moving to other side. Okay, then what you should take you do is you to take the difference between those two quantities, right? That's it. But uh, when you do this mathematics part, uh, there's one important thing that you should note. Okay, it's like this. Now let's say you got the two readings, hundred and fifty, and or let's say twenty. Okay, so you get the gap as hundred and thirty, right? And uh, let's say you got the uh, readings like uh, two hundred and twenty. Um, no, let's say two hundred and five. Okay. So the thing is here the gap is greater than one hundred and eighty. Here the gap is one hundred and ninety five. Okay, it's too much, right? It's too much. Simply it's something like this. You take a circle like this, and this is let's say the zero degree point. This might be the five degree point, and uh, yeah, uh, 180, 200 means this might be the like 200 degree point. Okay, you don't need to measure this reflex angle, what you should measure is this angle. See, so what will be this angle? Hmm? It will be if the gap is greater than 105, if gap is uh, greater than 180, the D vision angle is 360 minus. 200 minus 5. Okay, so that is 360 minus 195, that is equal to 17165 degrees. I hope you understood this. Okay, so please note this down. This is, uh, I mean, calculating deviation angle. Okay. Calculating the minimum deviation. If now, like I'm explaining this, if, let's say you don't know any theory. Okay. I am explaining you the way to answer the questions properly, right? Not the exact practical with the exact procedure. Okay. Otherwise, these videos might take like 40, 50 minutes, right? So this is sort of a revision for you. Okay. So calculating D minimum if D minimum, like if the gap between the two readings less than 180, this is what you should do. Just take it. Second point, if gap is greater than 180, this is what you should do. Please remember that point because it's a very important point uh, that you might mistakenly uh, you might uh, do a mistake in the exam. Okay, right. So that's all. Okay, first of all adjustments. Okay, and then uh, the A angle and then the deviation angle. Okay, that's a theory related to the practical. Now let's look at the uh, points. Okay, so uh, okay, yeah, see. This is one point. 
they were the prism and using the reference course. Now, this is also a theoretical point. I go to the questions and answers. Okay. Mention the following parts. Question number one. Mention the following parts with relevant adjustments. Telescope. See, this is what we should do. Focus on a distant object to receive parallel light. That's the adjustment related to the telescope. And actually, I told you these two adjustments under telescope. Okay. I mean, focusing on cross wires is the first one. Uh, pointing a distant object is the second one. Actually, pointing on a distant object is the adjustment related, related to the telescope. Focusing on the cross wire is the adjustment related to the eyepiece of the telescope. Okay. Just remember this question one. It is very important, right? And prism table, what we do is we level the prism table. That is the adjustment. Collimator, focus the slit, focus until the slit is clear seen on cross wires to give parallel light. Okay. That means uh, uh, for the collimator, what we do is like we put the telescope in line with the collimator. Okay. And adjust the telescope until we can clearly see a slit, right? A colorful slit in the collimator. Okay. Right. So that's it. Uh, these things are asked, frequently asked in uh, exam papers, right? You should like try all the structured essay questions. So when you do them, like you will see three, four questions related to this spectrometer. There was a recent question as well in like 2018 to 17. I can't exactly remember. Then you will see this adjustment. They'll always ask about these adjustments. So if you write them properly, you can get like three, four marks, right? Okay. Give the experimental steps you follow to measure the angle of deviation produced by a prism. Okay, so this is question number two. So here the thing is like, uh, they are not asking about the minimum deviation. They are just asking about the deviation, right? If you want to just calculate the deviation, what can you do? Like uh, without the prism, you get, let's say this point uh, mentions as 20 without the prism. And when you keep the prism, the light ray will get deviated and let's say it shows something like 80. Then the angle of deviation is 60 degrees. They are not talking about the minimum deviation. It's They are talking just about the angle of deviation produced by a prism. Right. Okay. So that is that question uh, two. How is the minimum deviation of prism identified experiment? See this thing I explained to you, right? At the minimum deviation, the image will going to turn back. Okay. So this is a 2014 level question. You can try these questions. Okay. Right. So see, ah, uh, this is also an important point related to the spectrometer. Now, uh, like if you have, I told you, you can calculate A and you can calculate B. Minimum deviation and angle of prism using this practical. Then you can use this equation even to calculate the refractive index of the prism. That's very important, right? You can use this practical, you can extend this practical, and you can you find that finding the refractive index of a prism is also a good application. Okay. Right. Then look at this question. If the near point of student is different from the so one, what should uh, be a structure in order to make the experiment accurate? The eyepiece. It should be surely the eyepiece, right? I mean, those uh, <clears throat> problems with the short sight, long sight, those near point problems can be adjusted using the lens. Okay, we can change the focal length of the lens, we can adjust it, and then we can correct those eye defects. That is something you know from theory, right? But maybe the reason for an error as follows. See, these three reasons. These three, uh, by heart, these uh, points, right? Sometimes there might be a person who understands the practical perfectly, but uh, like, only with the theory, you cannot answer the questions, right? Even in these uh, books, there is a discussion part. See, uh, let's say, here, yeah, discussion note, right? But from the practical handbook, you can you can't get anything, right? This, I mean, in the exams, they are totally different things, right? So that one, that th those things you can analyze from past papers and study them. So all those points are here. What you should do is you should buy hard these questions, right? Okay. And answers so, what may be a reason prism table may not be level it is not vertical it is too broad then there can be deviations see why do we use a sodium lamp rather than white light reason is if you use white light there will be lights of different wavelengths being produced different colors seven colors right therefore it will be a problem right that is the reason why we use sodium lamp because sodium only produces yellow color what are the two components that can be rotated independent of each other? You know that, right? It's the telescope and the prism table. All right. This is what I told earlier. Now, you don't need to remember it by this way, okay? You don't need to remember it by this way. I remember it in the way that I gave you in the note, right? Like, note this down. Right? 
it's better if you can uh, note this down. If the gap is uh, greater less than 180, this is what we do directly. We take if the gap is greater than 180, this is what we do. Okay. Sorry for writing this uh, in a read manner. Okay. So I hope you can understand. Can we use white light for prism angle measurement? For prism angle measurement, it's okay, right? We don't calculate the minimum deviation there. Okay. Whatever the light for prism angle, what we do is we just uh, want to see a good, uh, like bright light forming at the crosswise. That's it. Whether it is white, whether it has many colors, that doesn't matter, right? We just take two readings and get the prism angle by dividing the gap between the two readings by two. See, angle of prism is equal to theta divided by two. So for that, uh, white light doesn't matter, but not for minimum division, okay? What is the experimental way of leveling? Just the prism table so that is parallel to the telescope and collimator. You can understand this, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, we can try it. We can take the prism table, level it to a certain level, and then we should check it whether this uh, slit is appearing correctly. Sometimes uh, you can see slit like this. This is a problem, right? You should see it exactly in the middle. If you see it like this, what you should do is you should again level it a little bit and then you should finally ensure that you are you will be able to see the slit properly okay the light slit right so that's the end of this uh, video so if you have any questions you can uh, like uh, put them in the comment section uh, and uh, this point which i have written uh, see last page more points like uh, i there are no points like that right couldn't write them so these are the things that you should know about this practical First of all, that you should have a thorough understanding of the theory and then these uh, questions, right? It's better if you have done this practically in school, but I'll share you a video so that you can watch that. And uh, I mean, if you don't understand singular, just mute it and watch, it's fine. Uh, I just need you to observe how this practical is done. Okay, right.